Hi, I'm Danya Jackson, and this is the Lackawanna County Black Business Spotlight Series. This program is part of LackawannaMarkets.com, an online initiative sponsored by Lackawanna County and Anthracite Events to support our local creatives and to help our businesses and our artists to thrive. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing artist and designer Alessio Ayanenjim. Alessio, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me on, I appreciate it. I'm so excited about everything that's coming because look at all the color, <laughs> I'm just ready to dive into it. I wanna start with your origin story. Can you sure. tell me how all of this came to be? Sure, um, well in terms of my creative process, uh, I guess we have to go back to my upbringing. Um, I was born in Ethiopia I lived there for a few years before moving on to uh, living in Egypt, Malawi, Mozambique, um, a little bit of time in South Africa as well. Uh, this is all due to my mother's career um, as a foreign service officer uh, with USAID, which is an American agency for international development. So that's kind of what took us around. And um, so I ended up graduating in Mozambique. And when it came time for uh, looking at colleges, I ended up going with a uh, university at my mother's um, home state, Rhode Island. Um, so I, that was my first real, I've had experience in the U.S. Every, you know, my, my, mom's, my mom's side of the family is all from Rhode Island and every couple of years, re, every couple of years we'd be back in Rhode Island for, uh, for the summer or something like that. So um, it's not, it was my first time, but it was my first time really moving for a long period of time um, away from Africa. So it was a real big transition for me, even though I felt like I, you know, kind of like, I, I was, uh, I, I had some assimilation or some familiarity with American culture. It was, it was still a big transition. Um, and so it was really that transition uh, from African culture, from the diversity, the international community, um, uh, everything I've been surrounded by in my environment, uh, from the music to the people, the you know what was going on in the streets, um, that transition to Rhode Island was big, yeah. and you know I was like you know just in college and going about uh, what I do freshman year, and uh, I realized pretty quickly over the first three years. Uh, in Rhode Island that I was compulsively drawing. Um, things I, 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 I had been drawing and I, I was beginning to explore my creative process in high school, but it kind of took a turn when I did uh, move to um, college. And I realized I was compulsively drawing these patterns, these images uh, that were really evocative of aphorisms, basically, you know, ideas and concepts that um, were rooted in like emotions and feelings and memories from you know my time growing up in Africa. It would be music. When it would just be thinking about uh, just different things. Um, and so all my notebooks were just exploded with these images of these random glyphs. I was just like they're just they're just images. So when it came time for me to really sort through them, I realized there was something here, and I started putting them together and creating these larger compositions and uh, realized there was something really at play, yeah. That's beautiful, Thank that you. is fantastic. <laughs> so, you came to Rhode Island. Um, this is your first long-term stay in the U.S. Right. What were some of the hurdles you faced along the road um, being here now, spending all this time in the U.S., and how did you handle them? Sure. Um, well, uh, well, a big one definitely was um, a little bit of a culture shock uh, in some sense. Um, you know, a lot of the things that people, I thought that, I think I, I thought I was, I thought I had a little bit more understanding of American culture than I actually did. You know, I had a very baseline, I suppose. And, you know, when people will, people will reminisce about, you know, uh, you know, middle school years, you know, even high school years, middle school years, um, like the types of music, right, pop culture references. I was like, I don't, I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't know that music, I don't know that artist, I don't know that, that movie. 
don't know what you're talking about. And so I felt a little bit more alienated, I think. Um, and I think that's, a, that's something I've continued to feel, um, but I've learned to de deal with. Um, and How do you deal with it? How do I deal with it? Yeah. Uh, I try to learn. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I don't know something, I find you know, the clips. You go back and watch find them. The clips, I go and I watch it. You know, someone bring honestly, like someone will mention something, and I'll you know, friends will laugh or um, like, oh yeah, that was such a good you know, and I'll be like, I'll pull up my phone and I'll be like, I'll Google it. I'll be like, oh that's okay, cool. Watch a you know a trailer, read a little bit about it. You know, it's like okay, now I know. Yeah. And that's cool. That that is yeah. cool. That is cool, and it takes a strength. To, to and a persistence right. to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. um, so, what do you think is your signature? What what do people connect to, and they say, "Ah, this is Alessio's piece." Right. Well, I think um, a lot of my work has some similar visual elements. I mean, I, I, I work with a lot of organic shapes, um, and there's a lot of line work, uh, whether it be a larger composition like my immersion piece um, or um, as you would say over here, which is a little bit broader, larger strokes, uh, and, and less line work in general. But uh, I think most people notice the combination of uh, abstract figurative imagery um, and the combination of the colors and the organic shapes that kind of create these um, biomorphic shapes. Yeah. So biomorphic shapes. Okay, abstract. Abstract, yeah. Lots of color. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. okay. And can we can we talk a little bit more about this piece? Sure. Yeah, I was, absolutely. Um, so this the title of it is called Ajubidze, uh, and this was uh, it, it has some references to to Picasso a little bit, um, but uh, I kind of was taking my own look at it. Um, Again, I continue to uh, explore patterns and African. Well, that was one of the, those are one of the most one of the things that it's uh, I guess identifies my work. Um, I play with patterns a lot, and that again uh, is greatly influenced from my uh, history growing up in Africa and seeing a lot of that on the fabrics and cloths. Uh, and so uh, I've taken an interest in fabrics and fabric design and, and, and how my work can kind of translate to something a little bit more tactile. And so up here on the top left you see, uh, again it's not just paint, it's, it's a pattern that was, um, this was ironed on, it's, it's, it's like uh, one of those iron on transfers that I then applied and it created a little bit more of a, a, a texture and I, I think that more of my work will continue to be more textural um, or applied to fabrics such as um, this over here. Um, it's a print of this work, but on a sweatshirt. I noticed. Um, and so, yeah, I can talk about that in a little bit, but sure, um, sure. I, I definitely am working towards applying more of my work towards fabrics and textiles and, okay. and uh, it, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, basically this work is um, me just playing around with my blowing up some of those imageries. A lot of, a lot of that work imagery. A lot of the work I've done are, are really small drawings that have then compiled to create larger um, compositions and this is taking one of those and uh, scaling it up basically and then uh, working with the paint. Um, so in this obviously there's, there's a face of some sort, um, a figure and um, and the more you look, it seems the more you see. The more you see, is this, yeah. Is this something that you do? That seems to be the case. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure how intentional, I'm not sure how intentional it really is. It is definitely intentional to some degree, uh, but it also just kind of manifests and comes. And as I draw, things pile up. I think, um, I think a big part of that in my work came from, again, growing up to many places. I had to adapt each time I'd move. You know, I, every time I'd move, I'd have to, it was a new environment, I'd have to learn new things, I'd have to assimilate, I'd have to adapt. And I think that my artwork uh, subconsciously took on this, this layering effect of there's this and this and this and this and this. Um, sort of my personality, in a way, takes on multiple traits, you know, where I can go back to Mozambique and um, 
I could talk a different way, you know, I can speak some Portuguese and I can, I think differently and my perspective changes because of how many places I've lived, uh, multicultural perspective. And so I think that takes on in my work where my work itself represents that multi-perspective um, personality. So, after Rhode Island, where then? Where then? Yes. Uh, here. <laughs> Pennsylvania. Just Scranton, Pennsylvania. Okay. Well, 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 after graduating, I remained in Rhode Island for about a year or two uh, to collect thoughts, to figure out what was next. And then one of my good friends, um, who actually visited Rhode, Rhode Island while I was in school, um, they were like, why don't you come to Scranton? And I said, you're, that's a good question. <laughs> why and don't why, I? Why don't I? So I, yeah, so I just kind of came down here on a whim, and um, yeah, it's been great. It's been a great experience. How long have you been in Scranton? A little over a year now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you welcome. Yeah, thank welcome. you. Welcome. We I'm are loving <laughs> having you. <laughs> thank um, you. I, I, and and we are loving if if this is what we are getting in Scranton. I, I can't wait to see so much more of it. That's I'm excited fantastic. for what comes. I, yes, yeah. me too. Um, so you've also mentioned that you dabble in graphic design. And I, th I want to know, how does the graphic design influence the work that you're doing now? Right. So I, while, I was in, while I was in school, uh, in college, I studied graphic design. That was my, that was my major concentration. And um, and that's what I was kind of limited to, to work with because, you know, after a certain period of time, you're kind of locked into your concentration. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, when it comes down to thesis or um, you know, final final work, um, you have like your senior show. You have something to show that should be related to your concentration. Um, so I felt a little bit stuck in that because. What I realized was that uh, I didn't know what I actually wanted to do. Uh, I was a little bit more undecided. Um, now, I, you know, I still believe that was a smart choice for me uh, because I've learned a lot of, I've learned the tools, right? Um, the creative suite um, and, and creative tools that I can use um, for designing things like, you know, like logos and branding and uh, web design, all these things. And that's allowed me to, um, let's, let's add in another dynamic to another, that's given me more to work with when it comes to my work. Um, so additionally to the graphic design, I was, like I said earlier, I was continuously drawing and started to paint, to work with paint as well. Um, and so when I kind of, kind, of, kind of combine the two, it gives me a little bit more mobility in my editing process or in my creative process in general, where I can create these drawings and I can then scan them in and I can bring them into Photoshop or Illustrator and I can trace them and then I can move them around and recompose them and create something that I didn't draw initially but with the drawings that I did. Um, and so that's kind of allowed me to then uh, uh, kind of play with colors and shapes and, um, and see kind of what it is that I would have my final piece to be before I actually do it. Um, so, allow, and then it also allows me to just edit, you know, and yeah. create um, really interesting compositions that maybe I wouldn't have made if I just started off on the canvas um, immediately. Okay, okay. What do you see your role as in, how do you see your role in the community as a business and as an artist? And then going deeper, how do you see your role in the black community as a business and as an artist? So, from what I've uh, learned about Scranton, it's a small, it's a, it's a pretty small city, but there's, 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 there's things that are happening and going on, um, especially when it comes to the creative world um, um, and the black business world as well. And I've, I've learned that there are a lot of creatives, um, but they're not necessarily uh, as organized and put together into groups, like larger groups. Um, you know, I know a few, for example, but I haven't noticed, uh, I think that there's a growing, there's this growing creative, um, creative group. And I think that my contribution at this point would be 
um, helping to facilitate that process, helping to facilitate this, this group that's growing and, and the opportunities that can be available to us. You know, whether maybe uh, uh, the value we can start to add to the city, um, whether they be murals, um, you know, parades, various things, you know, uh, just events that, that are arts focused. Um, I know one of my friends, Glennis Johns, who, who runs the Black Scranton Project, um, and she's got a lot of things in the works. And um, that's, a, that's a prime example of, um, you know, she'll be like a forerunner in the facilitation um, of, of culture and, and arts in Scranton. Um, so I'd like to see myself uh, along those lines, uh, maybe not necessarily uh, exactly what Glenn is doing because who can keep up with her, um, <laughs> but uh, taking some form of facilitation and in, 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 in getting people together and, um, you know, we're stronger in numbers and if we can get enough people who are, you know, on the same page and in, in, in kind of creating more of an artistic culture in Scranton that's public. Public arts would be really cool and I think um, there's a lot that can come from that. Well said and so true. So we just went into um, how you see your role and, and, and it's a few, it, it's a, we're looking down the line a little bit. So let's talk about the now. Who are your clients right now and how do prospective clients find you? Sure. Uh, so I mean I guess we can identify clients here. Uh, currently, um, when it comes to more formal like design work, uh, you know, my clients are small businesses or individuals um, who usually need like some sort of uh, branding kind of work. And, and, and so I work towards, you know, creating a logo for them or developing their branding for them. Um, maybe doing some website work even too. Um, and uh, that's been to the extent of it. Um, I'm currently working on acquiring new skills, such as programming, so I can uh, add that to my graphic design arsenal and um, kind of boost my, uh, the effectiveness of my creative work on that end. Um, on the other end, in terms of fine arts, in terms of painting, I, uh, my clients would just be usually like galleries uh, or people who actually would like to buy um, my work. But in both, um, on both ends, my website or my, or my social media um, is usually a great place to, to find me, to be able to reach out to me. Um, and on a third note, uh, I suppose new clients would be in the form of apparel. Um, or, or, or fabrics that I plan on creating prints for, that I have created prints for, um, and will be selling at some point. But, um, so I'm working on this, I'm working on different angles here, and um, so that will be a new channel that people will be able to find me again, that would be probably through my website and, and social as well. Fantastic. Now we mentioned it a little bit earlier in, this, um, in the piece, but can you please tell us the name of this piece again? Sure, the name of this piece is Ajubitze. Ajubitze. Now, this is, I, this is fantastic. I love <laughs> that I, the energy of it and, and being next to it. Um, did you bring some more? Did I bring some more? Yes. I did bring some more, yes. Would you like to see it? I would love to see it. I would love to take a look at that right now. Right. Alessio, this is fantastic. Can we talk about this piece? Sure, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, I, you know, when I was transitioning from, uh, let's say, life in Africa, um, um, or, you know, my, my before college, um, into my college um, experience, um, oh, there's a lot of, there's this combustion of images, uh, graphics patterns, and, and so this kind of illustrates uh, kind of what I did with that work, where I took, a, I took a lot of these individual drawings and graphics and patterns and, and started to play with their proximity to one another and how they related to each other. And you know, so put them together basically. Um, and again, this combined with uh, some, some digital recomposition um, allowed me to kind of finish with this. And do we have a name for this piece? Yeah, this one's called Immersion, um, which I think just suits the uh, shoots the experience. It's it's 
uh, this immersion of cultures, this immersion of experiences um, from one culture to another, uh, and uh, this is sort of sort of my brain, my um, my brain processing a lot of this, and that's that, that that's what this most recent work was uh, created out of was processing a lot of this information that was just going wild and firing around my head. I see many, many different things happening here. So th this is fantastic. This is, I love it. What's happening here? So again, this is um, another one of the sweaters uh, that I screen printed or that I got printed on uh, with the Ajibitse um, artwork. So um, I did various colors. I did one in white, black, uh, this yellow gold, um, a, a red or maroon, as well as um, a sapphire blue. So you bring in the colors on the sweater themselves as well, too, I'm noticing. Yes, yeah. yes, I love absolutely. It. I love it. Yeah. And do you have more to show us today? I do have. I have one more I can show you. Let's do it. Okay. All right. This is a work in progress. Yes, it is. Tell me about it. What's sure. happening? Uh, yeah, so I thought it'd be, it'd be good to share kind of uh, what goes on before the paint uh, hits the canvas um, and this felt like a good place uh, to stop so uh, yeah this is just, this is this is just a drawing uh, right now and um, there's a lot of different things going on here um, well well why don't you tell me what what you see because I always like to ask people what they're what they're able to see first before I go into it I see what you did there <laughs> I like it um, so I see I see multiple things. It's like the more I look, the more I see. Um, there's definitely some sort of face, but I feel like I'm seeing more than one face. Um, definitely other uh, body parts. Um, I feel like this is um, very much of a, 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 almost a seductive female form. Um, some sort of strength, and I don't know if it's happy or angry, but there's strength here, that hand going after the back of the leg. and. I just feel like when the color comes in, you're still going to put more <laughs> on top of that. But again, this is my eye, not an artist's eye. Um, and w what do you um, tell me when I was right <laughs> and when I was wrong? Job, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot, like you said, there's a lot of things going on here. Uh, you know, there's, there's more of a uh, uniformed um, person, right? Um, there's like a uniform on and you know it indicates more of like a military um, or colonial um, esque um, uh, attire and then you have yeah you have multiple faces here um, and the color will signify exactly who's who um, but you have one face here who's kind of looking forward is clearly the the individual and then you have um, um, you have other faces here, which are a little bit more uh, stereotypically tribal, for example, with the teeth, for example, uh, for the teeth, um, and then you have these ruffles. So you can kind of, these ruffles, which kind of go with the outfit, more of a colonial. So you can see that there's two persons in a way, but maybe even more. Um, and, and then you have this, this body here. Again, color will add uh, to the perspective when there is color. Um, but this is definitely uh, uh, some commentary on uh, colonialism uh, in Africa and, and, and um, kind of telling different stories and different uh, perspectives, you know. Uh, we have the main, this, this figure, this uh, forceful figure, if you will, um, either stealing or um, dragging along um, this other figure, and you see resistance in the feet. You know they, they don't exactly want to be going where they're going, um, and so this was you know this was thoughts on some work in, that I had written about actually a little bit of a of a paper researching um, um, European settlers in Africa and and so it comments on a, a few different things. Um, uh, you know, taking a look at the, the robbing of one's culture uh, in one lens, uh, as well as, um, and also kind of um, comments on, uh, or nods to Picasso a little bit, 
because uh, some of his work with the African, the African masks, um, a lot of uh, the reason he was he was able to access those things was because they were they were empty African villages uh, during slavery. So uh, almost like he was able to create something exotic, but that was because uh, something was taken from them. And um, so, yeah, this basically paints a picture of, of the robbing of one's culture, uh, specifically by Europeans, um, and, um, and nods to a whole lot of different things, including you know, the creation of uh, African products that aren't exactly made in Africa. Uh, we can even think about what comes to mind for me, at least, is like Dutch wax prints. Um, um, by companies such as Vlisco, for example, where they create these exotic, quote unquote, African prints and patterns, but they aren't created by any Africans at all. Um, and yeah, and, and, and you know, it's just because Africans never had the chance to really take ownership of their artwork to be able to create an industry such as textile fabrics. I mean, obviously now there are, there are Africans who are creating that type of work, but uh, on a historical scale now. The depth of this piece is phenomenal. I cannot wait to see the finished product. What's the title of the completed piece going to be? Yeah, you never know. Oh, we don't know yet? <laughs> no, okay. No. I love this piece. And I understand you work in other mediums as well? Sure, yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly where, when it started or where it started, but my uh, creation of these graphics and images uh, always gave me a sense of movement, right? There needed to be some sort of animation or sense of movement in my work, which is something I am trying to work towards. Um, but until then, I've been, I've been experimenting with, uh, with motion graphics or with uh, little animations um, that I've created, um, such as, uh, you know, even album covers, such as Loveland, which I did for um, a friend, Henry Loveland, and, um, or that's his artist's name, um, Henry Nickerson, though. And um, yeah, so that's, that's been uh, motion and graphics is something that I've been uh, continuing to work towards, figuring out exactly how I'm going to incorporate that in the fine art realm. Um, and that, that, that's partly uh, involved with things like the sweatshirt uh, with textiles, right. um, because I plan on moving in that direction with motion in some form or another. I don't want to give too much away. Um, but uh, I, I'm looking at really unique ways to create my work as original as it is and still have a, um, still showcase it in really dynamic ways. Um, and I just think that uh, things that move um, are cool and they catch the eye. And if I can create my type of work that, you know, someone could walk by and be like, wait, what, what did I just see, huh? That's you know what I mean? And then yes. that, and that yeah, and that really plays into my. Um, um, again, it goes it it, it it goes into my perspectives. Um, these multiple changing perspectives, and you know, um, um, from living in different cultures and how I. Uh, I'm kind of living in this ocean of you know different thoughts and ideas. Someone says something, it reminds me of something else, and so it'd be interesting to be able to play with the public eye in that kind of way where they'll walk by a piece and be like, did I just see something do something? And like, wait, did it? I don't know. And, and I look it's like, forward to seeing you know, all Let of the world that. be as confused as I am. <laughs> 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 well, I'm ready for it. I am so, so honored to have spent this time with you here today. Um, I know I personally look forward to seeing the progression of everything going on in that brain um, on all of the mediums that you are using right now. Thank you for being here with me Thank today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And that wraps up another episode of Lackawanna County's Black Business Spotlight series. To see this, as well as previous episodes, visit ECTV's YouTube page, as well as Comcast Channel 19 and BlackScranton.org. Thank you for being here with me today.